So when we're talking about where electrons are, it's kind of a difficult conversation because of the uncertainty principle, and we don't know where they are. So we can define a set of quantum numbers that helps us describe electrons, since we can't just take a picture of them and, and say where they are exactly. So the principal quantum number characterizes the energy of the electron in a particular orbital. n can be any integer whose number is equal to or greater than 1. The larger the value of n, the more energy the orbital has. The larger the value of n, the larger the orbital, meaning that it has a greater radius. As n gets larger, the amount of energy between the orbitals gets smaller. And we've seen this already in a plot of the energy of the orbitals of hydrogen. So the distance between the orbital n equals 1 and n equals 2 in a hydrogen atom, this is the greatest distance. This is a very big energy gap. Between 2 and 3, the gap is smaller. Between 3 and 4, the gap is smaller. Between 4 and 5, the gap is smaller still, and so on and so on. So the principal quantum number n tells us the energy level of an electron. n equals 1 is the lowest energy level n equals 2 is the next energy level, n equals 3 is the next energy level, and so on. These are just the um, energy levels for electrons that are around a hydrogen atom. So in addition to the principal quantum number n, there are also three other quantum numbers, l, m sub l, and n sub s. These are the four quantum numbers. So orbitals with the same value of n are in the same principal energy level. Orbitals with the same value of n and l are said to be in the same sublevel. So let's look at this plot for a minute. n equals 1. This is the lowest energy level. n is the principal quantum number. l is the angular momentum quantum number. l is a quantum number that tells me the shape of the orbital. So n equals 1 tells me that these are the orbital in this energy level. I have this is the lowest energy level. So um, l equals 0 tells me the shape of the orbital that's in this energy level. And when l equals 0, that's what we call an s orbital. When n equals 2, this is the next rung up. So these are the, if I'm drawing an, um, an atom here, here's my nucleus. I have one, two, three, right? So we're talking about the electrons that are around the nucleus. So n equals two. Now we're in this orbital, this principal energy level. When l equals zero, that is a shape that's called an s orbital. When l equals one, that's a shape that's called a p orbital. So when we're in n equals 3, that's the third energy level, the third orbital around the nucleus where electrons can be. When n equals 3, I can have my, my angular momentum quantum number l equal to 0. And 0, l equals 0 is s. l equals 0 is s here. l equals 0 is s here. l equals 0 is always s. When l equals 1, we call that a p orbital. This is n equals 3 and l equals 1, so this is a 3p orbital. l equals 1 is always p, so here's 3p, l equals 1, 2p. This is a 2p orbital because I'm in n equals 2. So the, there's lots of orbitals, s orbitals, p orbitals, d orbitals, and those orbitals are within an energy level. I have kinds of orbitals in n equals 1, I have different kinds of orbitals in n equals 2, and I have different kinds of orbitals in n equals 3. Giving a series of quantum numbers, like what is n equal to, what is l equal to, what is m sub l equal to, and so on, this tells me which orbitals I'm talking about, which electrons I'm talking about, and where they are in an atom. So the number of sublevels within a level is equal to the principal quantum number n. So how many sublevels are there in n equals 1? One. 1. 
how many sublevels are there in n equals 2, 2, and so on. The number of orbitals within a sublevel is equal to 2L plus 1. So if I am talking about the uh, um, L equals 0 sublevel, then we're talking about S orbitals. And if L equals 0, then 2 times 0 is 0, plus 1 is 1. So how many orbitals are there when L equals 0? 1. How many orbitals are there when L equals 1? Well, 2 times 1 is 2, plus 1 is 3. So L equals 1 has 3 sublevels. L equals 2 has 2 times 2 is 4, plus 1, 5 sublevels, and so on. The number of orbitals in a level is equal to n squared. So how many orbitals are there in n equals 1? 1, 1 squared. How many orbitals are there in n equals 2? 2 squared, 4 orbitals. How many are there in n equals 3? 3 squared, 9 orbitals. The L quantum number primarily determines the shape of the orbital. S, the, or, the shape of the orbital could be called an S orbital. We'll talk about what that shape looks like in a minute. It can be called a P orbital, it's another shape, a D orbital. So the shape of the orbital is given by a letter. And L tells us what that shape is, the quantum number L. L can have values from 0 to n minus 1. That's the rule for the atomic, for the um, print, for the quantum number L. So if n equals 2, then what are the values of L? Well, 0 to 2 minus 1. And 2 minus 1 is 1. So 0 to 1. So if L, if n equals uh, 2, then what are my values for L? 0 or 1? Let's do another one. If L equals 3, that's not what I meant, sorry. If n equals 3, then L equals 0 to 3 minus 2. Oops, I didn't mean that either. Sorry, it's getting late. 3 minus 1. So if n equals 3, n equals 3, then L equals 0 to 3 minus 1, which is 2, right? 0 to 2. L equals 0 to 2. So these are the rules for the principal quantum numbers. When I know what n is, that limits what L can be. Giving a value for n tells me that L can only be 0 to 1, or 0 to 2, or 0 to 3, and so on. Each value of L is called by a particular letter that designates the shape of the orbital. S orbitals are spherical. P orbitals are like two balloons tied at the knot. D orbitals are like four balloons tied at the knot. F orbitals are like eight balloons tied at the knot. This is what an S orbital looks like. When L equals zero, that tells me the shape of the orbital. And that shape is, when L equals 0, the shape is called an S orbital. S orbitals just look like spheres, just like a ball. The probability density represents the total probability of finding an electron at a particular point in space, so just like the catcher's mitt. In the middle, that has the highest probability of finding the electron. It's most likely here in the middle. You can see that's where the most dots are, the, the density of these dots, where there's a lot of dots, there's a lot of them in the middle. As I go out here, there's fewer. Out here, there's fewer still. Out here, there's not even any dots anymore. So that means that the most likely position for the electron is in here, but this electron could still possibly be out here. There's a couple of dots that are out here, so there's some probability of finding the electron even out here. We call this the probability density. 
and the uh, density of dots is proportional to the density of finding the probability of finding the electron at that location. So when we're talking about um, um, orbitals, we also have to think about um, uh, the energy levels as representing uh, the electrons vibrating at higher frequencies. So maybe you can imagine what happens if you've ever done this, and one person's here and they have a rope, and one person's here and they have a rope. And if they kind of vibrate the rope together, they move it up and down at the same time. The rope can go all up and all down. But if, if they both start um, vibrating the rope going up and down really fast, and each person is, is going up and down really quickly, then they can start to make the rope make a shape like this, where it, has, it goes up and down here, and then there's a cross. And then it goes up and down again here, and then there's a cross. And it goes up and down again. These are called nodes. And this is a wave. This string represents this rope between two people, represents a one-dimensional wave. We can also represent two-dimensional waves, and that's like a, a wave on a surface. An orbital where an electron is, that's like a three-dimensional wave. So it has the same kind of phenomenon where we look at nodes in a wave. So we'll see what what I mean about that here after this video. So this is sand on a uh, vibrating surface. And so as you can hear the frequency of the vibration by the frequency of the noise. As the noise goes up in tone, then the frequency of the vibration, the vibration is getting faster and faster and faster. So as they increase the vibration of that surface, it causes the sand on top of the surface to move into a specific pattern. And the reason is because as it's vibrating, there's a big peak right here. The surface takes a peak and it knocks all the sand off. And right here, the surface makes a little valley and all the sand gathers in the valley. And right here, there's a big peak and, this, and the sand can't sit on the peak. So wherever the sand is sitting on this surface must be a trough. It must be a low point in the surface because of the vibration. And as the vibration increases, it changes the shape of the surface. So watch. So now they're gonna increase the vibration. There, you can hear the sound getting higher, so the vibration's increasing even more. The shape changed. The shape of that surface changed. And now look, they're increasing the vibration more. And the shape is changing again. See how the shape of the surface changes as a function of the vibration. As the vibration gets higher and higher and higher, the surface starts to change more and more. Um, and it becomes more and more complicated, doesn't it? Look at this one. When the, when the vibration is very, very high and the pitch is very high, look at how complicated the surface is. Let's go back to here when it was very low. This is what the surface looked like when the vibration was very low. This is what the surface looks like when the vibration is very high. Why is this on there? So as the vibration increases, the pattern becomes more complicated. We can say that the nodes are increasing. So here you can see this is a node. Right here where it goes from light to dark, that's a node. Right here it goes from light to dark, that's a node. Right here it goes from light to dark, that's a node. So this has like two nodes in this surface. By the time we get here, light to dark one node, light to dark two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven nodes in this surface as the vibration is higher and only two nodes in this surface when the vibration is lower. So a node is just a point where we go from high to low to high to low to high to low. So where it crosses over from high to low we call that a node. So 
um, we can think about nodes on um, as they're related to the principal quantum number like this n equals 1 n equals 2 n equals 3 n equals 4 n equals 5 when n equals 1 the rope looks like this there's got your guy over here he's holding on to it this guy over here they're holding on to the rope and they're vibrating it and it looks like this zero nodes there's no places where it crosses over from high to low it's only high right here's the zero point the whole rope is high none of it is low so there's no places where it crosses from high to low so there's zero nodes when n equals 2 it looks like this right here's oops here's this guy over here holding this part here's this guy over here holding this part it, we've got I'm gonna label the parts that are above zero as plus and the parts where it goes low as minus and zero is just the dotted line so up here it's all high it doesn't go over from plus to minus zero nodes when n equals two it goes from plus down to minus once this point right here where it crosses zero that's a node one node when n equals three I kinda got these squished in here when n equals three my rope looks like this here's zero I have plus and plus these two sides are up above and minus so how many nodes do we have when n equals three one two the places where it goes from plus down to minus that's one minus up to plus two nodes so what we can say is how many nodes do I have Oops. how many nodes n minus one when n equals one I have one minus one zero nodes when n equals two two minus one one node when n equals three three minus one two nodes so I can calculate the number of times that the wave is going to pass from high to low just by looking at the principal quantum number n in an s orbital the whole this is just n equals one the rope is all above the zero point so it's all plus it's all one color in n equals two I have one node it goes from blue which is high to red which is low so in my orbital it goes from blue which is high to red which is low this right here is the node in my 2p orbital this is where it switches from blue to red this is where it switches from blue to red so a node in an orbital is where it changes colors zero nodes it doesn't change color one node it does change color how do I know there's zero nodes in a 1s orbital because n minus 1 is how many nodes there are 1 minus 1 is 0 how do I know that there's two that there's one node in a 2p orbital because the number of nodes is n minus 1 2 minus 1 equals one node one node it goes from blue to red once right here here is a 2s and a 3s orbital s orbitals are always spheres 1s is a sphere 2s is a sphere 3s is a sphere 2s is bigger than 1s 3s is bigger than 2s so as the number gets bigger this the orbital gets bigger it also gets more nodes 1s has zero nodes 2s has one node 2 minus 1 3s has two nodes 3 minus 1 where are the nodes right here it goes from uh, blue oh the uh, the node is the white part blue node it crosses over blue node it crosses over so how many times does it do it here once in the 2s orbital twice in the 3s orbital so when l equals 0 I have an s orbital and when l equals 1 I have a p orbital p 
p orbitals have uh, there are three p orbitals, and we'll look at their different shapes. I designate those three p orbitals with the principal with the quantum numbers negative one, zero, and positive one, and we'll see what that means. And those orbitals, those numbers correspond to the p orbitals p x, p y, and p z. This is what a p orbital looks like. It has two balloons that are tied together at the knots. When I'm talking about an s orbital, an s orbital, there's only, it always looks the same. When I put a sphere with its center right here at the origin of the Cartesian coordinate system, this sphere looks exactly the same as this sphere, looks exactly the same as this sphere, if you pardon my terrible drawing skills. But you get the idea. But if I'm drawing this shape that has two dumbbells, then if I draw it like this, and I draw the dumbbells along the x-axis, then that looks different than if I draw those dumbbells along the y-axis. And that looks different than if I draw those dumbbells along the z-axis. So when I have a p orbital, that seems to point to the left and right, or the front and back, or the top and bottom, when it has sides like this, then I, there are three of them to, in order to fully describe the shape of the p orbital. If I draw an s orbital, I don't need to draw three because where's the top and the bottom of a sphere? It doesn't have a top and a bottom. If I draw this versus this, you can tell the difference. If I draw this, top, bottom, and then I spin it around, and now I'm calling this the top, and this the bottom, because I spun it, they're exactly the same. But if I have this, top, bottom, and I spin it around, this shape and this shape are not the same anymore. They look different. So in order to describe all of the different directions that this shape can point. Since there are three dimensions, I need three of these orbitals, one of them on the x-axis, one of them on the y-axis, and one of them on the z-axis. So when I have uh, p, p orbitals, n equals 2, l equals 1. All right, 2 just means the energy level, the principal energy level. Principal energy. 1 is the shape, or L is the shape. When L equals 1, we're talking about p orbitals. And now let's look at m sub L. We haven't looked at this one yet. So the values of m sub L for these p orbitals are 0, oops, are negative 1, 0, and positive 1. So I have three, val three possible values for m sub l. What do these three values mean? Well, they correspond to these, minus 1, 0, and plus 1. They correspond to the three different orientations of the p orbital n equals 2, I'm talking about an orbital in the second energy level. L equals 1, I'm talking about an orbital in the second energy level that looks like a p orbital because it has that shape. m sub L equals negative 1, 0, or plus 1. I'm talking about the, the way that p orbital has a shape. Well, it can point this way, minus 1. It can point this way, 0. Or it can point this way, negative 1. So these different numbers are ways of describing these orbitals. These orbitals are where electrons are. Electrons are around the nucleus. They sit inside of these shapes. They sit inside of these balloons. When L equals 2, we're talking about d orbitals. And d orbitals can have a set um, m sub l, the quantum number m sub l, can equal negative 2, negative 1, 0, plus 1, or plus 2. 
So the rule for m sub l is m sub l equals negative l to positive l. So what that means is here we're talking about l equals 2. Right? When l equals 2, we're talking about d orbitals. So if l equals 2, what are, my, what are the values of m sub l? m sub l, well, it will equal negative l to positive l. So negative 2 to positive 2 are my possible values for m sub l if my l equals 2. So negative 2 to positive 2 is negative 2, negative 1, 0, positive 1, or positive 2. So when L equals 2, M sub L equals negative 2 to positive 2, and since these can only have integer values, which is whole numbers, then those values are negative 2, negative 1, 0, positive 1, and positive 2. So what does that mean? That means that L equals 2, and I'm talking about d orbitals, and I have five values for M sub L. That means that I have 5d orbitals that have different shapes, different orientations. This one, where they're in between the z and the y axes, the balloons are. This one, where they're in between the x and the y axes. This one, where the balloons are in between the x and the z axes. This one, where the balloons are right on top of the x and the y axes. And this one, that looks a little bit different with a donut and two balloons along the z-axis. So this is all highly abstract, I understand. So let's get to the point. L equals 3, f orbitals. There's another one, right? When L equals 3, then we could run through this whole thing again. L equals 3. So what are my possible values of m sub L? Well, they're negative L to positive L. I just said L was 3. So that oops, equals negative 3 to positive 3. And since they can only be integers, sorry, this is getting really messy. Let me try again. Negative L to positive L. L is 3, so negative 3 to positive 3. Since they can only be integers, that's negative 3, negative 2, negative 1, 0, positive 1, positive 2, positive 3. So I have seven possibilities. When I'm talking about L equals 3, I'm talking about f orbitals. That's the shape of the orbital. How many f orbitals are there? One, two, three, four, five, six, seven. Here's what those seven f orbitals look like. Eight balloons tied together at the knot. Eight balloons, eight balloons, eight balloons. And then these weird ones with two donuts and two balloons that look a little bit like the other ones. So. Again, what exactly are we talking about? This is what we're talking about. This is what all this means. The old picture of an atom was this. Here's the positive charge. And here's where electrons are. Electrons are here's two, and here's e, 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 e. All right, you get it. Those are electrons. I'm just going to draw them as dots now. And there's eight electrons here. And there's eight electrons here. And we can count the electrons around the atom. And this is the, the old picture of the atom. And we add 2 plus 8, 10, plus 8, 18, 26, plus 4, 34 electrons. If we had 34 electrons and we looked that up on the periodic table, Then number 34 would be selenium. So we could say this equals selenium. And this is a selenium atom. And this is what the electrons look like around a selenium atom. But now with quantum mechanics, we're saying this is wrong. That's not what it looks like. 
the electrons do not go in these circular orbits. These are circular, like an onion, like a solar system. This is wrong. Rather, what quantum mechanics tells us is that here's my nucleus. The first electrons go like this, s orbital. The next electrons go like this, 1p orbital, 2p orbitals. Remember, there's three of these, 3p orbitals. The next set of electrons, that's this is 1s, this is 2p. Then I have uh, 2s. And then I have a 3s. So some of these orbitals are circular ones. The s ones are circular. And then I have 3p. Right, 3p is a little bit bigger than 2p, but it has the same shape. We call this one 3p. And then we have 3d. So now my drawing's going to get really messy because I'm really bad at drawing d. But d is like four balloons, right? So one balloon, two balloons, three balloons, four balloons. And then I have another one like this. One balloon, two balloons, three balloons, four balloons, and so on. You can see my drawing's starting to get pretty busy here. 3d. So the old drawing was this, n equals 1, n equals 2, n equals 3, n equals 4, n equals 5, and the electrons are all in these circular orbits. No, this is what it looks like. n equals 1 has a circular shaped orbital, n equals 2 has a circular shaped orbital, and these balloon shaped orbitals. n equals 3 has a circular shaped orbital, the balloon orbitals that are p orbitals, the balloon orbitals that are d orbitals. n equals 4 has a circular orbital, my p orbitals, it has d orbitals, it has f orbitals with the balloons. Right. So the idea is that yes, the electrons go around the atom, but the electrons don't go around the atom like planets around the sun. The electrons go around the atom in these really weird shapes. They, the electron will be in this balloon, or in this balloon, or in this balloon, or in this balloon. But it won't be in a sphere. It'll, the electrons in these energy levels will only be inside these balloons. So, why are atoms spherical? Because if you stack all of these balloons on top of each other, all of the orbitals on top of each other, then it does, in fact, look like, well, the electron can only be here, but there's an electron here, and there's an electron here, an electron here, and 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 here. It does look like the electrons are kind of in spherical shells around the nucleus. But they actually have these very specific shapes. So you stack all those orbitals on top, and you kind of get something that looks like this. Okay, how many nodes are there in a 3s orbital? Remember, number of nodes equals n minus 1. So, what's n? 3, in this case, 3 minus 1. So how many nodes do I have? 2. Where are the nodes? Here's a 3s orbital. Well, here's a node. It goes from purple to blue right here. It changes colors. And then it goes from blue to purple right here. So it changes colors twice. Those are the two nodes. One, two. What type of nodes are they? These are called radial nodes. A radial node is one that looks like a circle. So you can see this is like the shell of an onion. How many nodes are there in a 3p orbital? Well, we use the same calculation, n minus 1, 3 minus 1, 2. Two nodes in a 3p orbital. What type of nodes are they? Well, here is a radial node. Here it goes purple to blue, and on top it goes blue to purple. So you can see this green circle right here is representing a radial node, like the shell of an onion. But this one right here, where it goes from blue to purple in the middle, that's not a circle, that's like a piece of paper. This is a flat node right in the middle of these two. So here's a radial node, radial. 
And this node in the middle that looks like a piece of paper that separates these two right here, since it's kind of flat like this, this one's called a planar node. Radial and planar. How many sublevels are there in the n equals 4 level? So remember, a sublevel is um, the different shapes of orbitals. So what kind of shapes are there? There's s, p, d, and f. Those are the types of sublevels we have. And to figure out the number of sublevels in a principal quantum number, that just equals n minus 1. So, number of sublevels is the same as the number of nodes. So, in this case, 4 minus 1 equals 3. I have three sublevels. Which, which sublevels do I have in level 4? Four? 4s, four 4p, four and 4d. All right, how many sublevels are there in the n equals 4 level? So the number of sublevels equals n. So n equals 4, number of sublevels equals 4. So a sublevel is just the type of orbital, the shape of orbital that we're talking about. So there's s, p, d, and f are all the types of sub or sublevels that there are. In n equals 4, we have 4, so we have all four of them. 4s is a type of orbital, 4p is a type of orbital, 4d is a type of orbital, and 4f is a type of orbital. So how many sublevels are there in n equals 4? 4. How many orbitals are there in the n equals 4 level? Um, well, if we're talking about all of the orbitals together, then we're talking about how many s orbitals we have one. There's always just one of every kind of s orbital. How many p orbitals are there? Three. Remember the m sub l. We have um, zero. We have negative one, zero, and positive one. So three. How many d orbitals are there? Negative two, negative one, zero, positive one, and positive two. That's five. How many f orbitals are there? Negative 3, negative 2, negative 1, 0, positive 1, positive 2, positive 3. 7. So how many orbitals are there total? 7 plus 5 is 12, plus 3 is 15, plus 1 is 16. So what is the maximum number of electrons that can be held in the n equals 4 level? So in every orbital, every orbital can hold 2 electrons. Each orbital holds two electrons. So how many electrons can be held in the n equals 4 level that has four, 16 orbitals? 16 times 2. 32 electrons. What subshell is designated by each set of quantum numbers? n equals 1, l equals 0. So if l equals 0, that tells us that this is an s orbital. So n equals 1, l equals 0, that's 1, s. n equals 3, that's 3 something. l equals 1, that's indicating a p orbital. So this is 3, p n equals 4, so that's 4 something, and when l equals 3, 3 is an f orbital. 
So remember, L equals zero is S orbital. L equals one is a P orbital. L equals two is a D orbital. L equals three is an F orbital. So this one is 4F. What are the possible values of M sub L if N equals three and L equals two? So remember the rules for M sub L, they equal negative L to positive L. So negative two to positive two, which is negative two, all the integer values, zero plus one plus two. So what are the possible values of ML? These are the possible values of M sub L when N equals three and L equals two. So we're talking about N equals three and L equals two. We're talking about the 3D orbitals. And in the 3D orbitals, there are five of those 3D orbitals. And they have these designations of M sub L.